So I want to talk to you about a fluid design challenge and then share a solution. And it has to do with grids. Now, I've seen this on a few fluid pages. Here, let me show you an example. It is on a People Tools 859 page. It's actually the fantastic new event mapping navigation collection. It has a streamlined approach for creating event mapping services. I absolutely love it. But here's the problem. When I go to event mapping services, there is a save button, but it's underneath the grid. And you can see here as I'm using my scroll button on my mouse, it's, it's scrolling through the list of items, but not actually scrolling to the bottom of the page. Well, I mean, there's a clear, obvious solution here, right? Don't use the mouse wheel. Just use the scroll bar that's on the side to get to the save button at the bottom. But I'm curious, why is it behaving this way? Is there something about the grid? Is there something about the page? What is it? So let's do this. Let's do a little bit of investigation and then see if we can find a solution. So I'm gonna do a quick J control to give us the page name and we can see the page and grab that EV map service Stefan. And an application designer, let's open the page. And okay, so we see, you know, fascinating. I see dots. Now dots would be an indication of a classic page, wouldn't it? So are we saying this is a classic page? Hmm, well, you know, actually, and we talk about this in great detail in our fluid classes, there really is no difference between a classic and a fluid page from a metadata perspective. Fluid is a design strategy and a design pattern, not necessarily a page type. So as we look at this though, we see it has, it appears to be all the appropriate group boxes. So let's just briefly review. Yep, we see the PS apps content. Again, we covered that in our Fluid 1 and our Fluid 2 classes. Uh, we see a container around. And you know, interesting though, I see, let's close this. We see service, let's go up to the top, service definitions once, not twice. Let's look at this page here or this group box and we see layout only. Now, one of the strategies we teach is when you have a layout only group box, use that for your label. So we would have used the style class as the label, or in this case, since this is the most common style class for all fluid pages, we would have just said, nah, just skip it. Uh, document the exceptions and that is not an exception. That would be normal. This right here, I believe is the group box that we see up there. Let's just take a look. It says group box type default. Okay, that looks normal. Now let's take a look at the grid though, because I'm curious, why is the grid spanning the entire height of the page? Is there something perhaps set on the grid? And let's go ahead and let's go right over to the fluid tab. See, is there anything special there? Not really. If we go to the general tab, we see unlimited occurs count. Oh, interesting. So let's do this though, before we start making changes to see if we can perhaps resolve this issue. Let's resize this page. You see that? That's just the barely seeing the top of the save button there. And if we resize it again, you know what you see? <laughs> the exact same thing. It's almost as if the save button wants to be visible. And it's very clear that the grid is taking up a certain portion of the page. And it doesn't matter how tall the page is. It's always leaving or taking up that exact same percentage. Fascinating, isn't it? So let's go back here and let's uncheck the unlimited occurs. Let's see what happens. We'll hit refresh and of course reload and then go back to event mapping services. And interesting, now the grid no longer resizes with the page. Well, it does kind of, you can see when it, there's not enough room. When there is enough room, actually there isn't enough room. There's a whole bunch more rows here. And in fact, we're not seeing any scroll bars, are we? Okay, so note to self, don't, uh, I mean, make, make sure you use unlimited occurs. Okay, I like that, that makes sense. That's what I do anyway, because people's have to use this lazy loading here for fluid anyway. So I have another strategy, let's try this. What if we move the save button to the top? Now again, remember the issue is, this extra scroll bar here. I want that save button visible all the time. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, if the grid is going to use lazy scrolling and it actually has its own scroll bar here, why can't we see the save button too? Interesting. So let's try something. What if, and let's just, let's move these around a little bit just to give us a little bit more space. What if we moved the save button to the top?
That looks good. That fits. Oh, and it isn't enough to just move it to the top. We should also go to the order tab and reorder. So that's this group box and the save button. Let's just let's just confirm. So grab the group box and group box perfect. And we want to move it inside of here at level zero. Fantastic. Save. And let's reload. Wait, there's the save button. And we have a scroll bar for the grid. What about the scroll bar for the page? We don't have one anymore. That's fantastic. In fact, this is exactly what we want. No longer do we have that double scroll bar. This is amazing. This is great. What would I do different? I know what I would do. I would actually wrap like this. Uh, let's just move these. That looks good. I mean, the say, say, save, I don't know. What do you think? Inside the service definitions group box or not? It relates to, it relates to all the rows here. I don't know. I guess you could go either way. I think I want the save button on the right though. So briefly, just a quick style class for that. PSC underscore H align dash right. I like that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit too busy on the right here now. You know where I really want the save button? I mean, I want to show you this because I want you to see that when you put grids at the bottom, they behave. They're taking up whatever space is left, or so it appears. That's fantastic. I really do still want the save button at the bottom, but I would do it differently. I think I would put the save button in a sticky footer so that it's always visible and the content would scroll inside of or between the header and the sticky footer. Another alternative is perhaps to put the save button into a the custom header bottom. That might be another alternative. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it should go back over here to the left. Another thing that I think I would do is I would use the PSC underscore primary style class to mark this as the primary button. So anyways, note to self, put the grids at the bottom. Isn't it amazing that just a couple of minor changes have such a significant impact? And you know, I need to point out that I made these changes to an Oracle delivered page, and I did that for demonstration purposes only. I would not change this page in real life. Now, one more thing before we go. If we look in Application Designer, uh, you'll notice there is a horizontal rule at the bottom of the page. Now, these horizontal rules are very important. They're critical. You'll find them littered all over the Oracle delivered pages. Now, we cover these special horizontal rules in many of our people toast classes. Anyways, there are so many amazing things we can do with Fluid. Be sure to browse our other sound bites for examples. And likewise, subscribe for updates so you don't miss future episodes. Now, at JSM Pros, we teach PeopleSoft development tips like this every week. Check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Do you have a group you'd like to train? Give us a call and let's get something on the schedule. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have an idea you would like us to discuss in a future soundbite? If so, share it with us at soundbites.jsmpros Com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.